Our next presentation is from Rachel Hill, and it's based on her unique and innovative uh, take on astronautics. In the 60 years uh, history of space flight uh, that has brought with it, as we suggested, uh, a, a discovery or rediscovery of, the, of Earth, not just as a world, but as a planet, along the way, numerous experiments, tests, simulations, trials have been conducted to determine both the uh, essential qualities uh, of life as it is revealed and as it's removed from the uh, gravitational pressure of ground, but also to test the limits uh, of that life, uh, what it could be, what it can be, um, that is uh, revealed by that experimental condition. It's worth remembering that the large majority of Earthlings that have um, ever been in space uh, are not humans. They have been uh, famously Moscovite stray dogs with Laika and Stroka, chimps, insects, fungi, amphibians, uh, and as Rachel will show, spiders. And it's been these organisms, uh, more so than flags, that have gone on our behalf. Um, and on, on their own as well. Rachel's work uh, braids uh, the, the idea of terraforming with that of anthropoforming or remaking of that organism, which Helen Hester will discuss in more detail tomorrow, uh, and that this remaking of the organism in relationship to its niche or its environment, and in turn the environment in relation to their organism. Um, so at stake here, I think, for her work is not only... Um, again, this experiment to determine the nature of the creature by testing its limits, but by testing the transformation and transformability of that creature in relationship to those limits. The humans who have performed spacewalks, for example, um, lose one relationship to the ground, but they gain uh, and to gravity, obviously, um, but in doing so gain another. And it, it, gravity, in many ways, really is the protagonist of Rachel's story, it is the force that, um, that not only holds uh, form in place, but in fact gives form um, as things uh, evolve to suit the demands of the weight that gravity brings to bear. And so in her story, those, those creatures in space, it's less that they're freed from gravity, um, what in those creatures being either the astronauts or their craft, one or the other. It's less that they're liberated from form, but rather that what's revealed is that their form um, was, has been given in the first place um, by this gravity that squeezes them and might remake them accordingly in different ways. The philosophy of the ground, this ground that gives way, obviously some, you know, something that is perhaps fetishized by Heideggerians, the status of the ground, um, is in Rachel's telling something that is here uh, weirded, is made weird in this relation, new relationships to, to microgravity, um, and shows in some ways that the, the observation and, and uh, grounding of ground within this philosophical tradition may have been uh, a misrecognition of the agency of gravity all along. Most at stake for her, however, I think is uh, what this creatureliness, as she calls it, of the astronaut or cosmonaut and their craft, um, and how the two remake each other under conditions of, of, of microgravity, um, which is the organism, which is the niche, um, which is the environment, swap places uh, along the way. Sometimes the astronaut's the environment for the craft and vice versa. So. The lesson, finally, is that the experiment uh, up there reveals something that is always already at work down here uh, in this braiding of the terraforming and anthropoforming, the, the organism making the world, world making the organism, one making each other uh, in turn. So uh, that Rachel Hill. Hi, my name is Rachel Hill. I am a researcher and writer based in London. 
Um, today I'm happy to share my project with you. It is called Cosmoplanetarity and its aim is to present a properly cosmically contextualized understanding of the Earth. So, thank you. Cosmoplanetarity. Key to Gayatri Spivak's concept of planetarity is the notion that the planet is a species of alterity. This prioritization of alterity and difference pushes the Earth away from a discrete and complete sphere towards something altogether more creaturely. So if the Earth is not a closed blue marble, but rather a dynamic and shifting creature, then a startling question arises. Where exactly does the planet end? Currently, a growing brood of satellites and space stations establish informational, material and effective flows between orbital space and various terrestrial layers. But rather than remove from the planet they encircle, what if these microgravitational infrastructures are actually active agents in planetary composition? What if these technologies are a new vanguard of the planet at the forefront of its shifting limits? Not only witnesses to the anthropocenic decline below, but also another layer of unintended terraforming. Cosmoplanetarity contends that the planet's parameters are indeed being artificially expanded through these technologies. As such, Cosmoplanetarity asks, what does it mean to inhabit an artificially extending, creaturely and cyborgian planet? To investigate these questions, the following will take cosmonaut Alexei Leonov's reflections on spacewalking and various space stations as our two interlacing guides. 1. Spacewalk Creatures In 1965, Alexei Leonov became the first Earthling to spacewalk. Skipping footage of this historic feat, capture a being in a kaleidoscopic drift. Tethered to the ship but untethered from the ground, this new mobility happened without a surface. With an echoing bound, the spacewalk thus begins to unmake what it is to walk, weirding what constitutes a ground, and scuttling what it is to inhabit. So whilst spacewalking, Leonov begins to behold the ship as an estranging tangle of human and technical earthling bodies, where, quote, It was so quiet I could hear my heart beating. I could hear the sound of my own breathing. The two television cameras stared at me as if they were alive. The ship, bathed in the bright rays of the sun, with its antenna needles unfurled, looked like some kind of fantastic creature. But what is a creature? What does the creaturely denote? And what is born through the creaturing of microgravity infrastructures? In other words, let's take Leonov's fantastic creature for a walk. As with Frankenstein's monster, the creature is that which is made, the unnamed, and the unnameable. A creature's hybrid, artificial, it is a generative contagion which refuses and refutes notions of purity. It is endlessly scalable and always in the process of becoming something else. It is endless formation rather than finished form. Creatureliness thus highlights how ships and infrastructures are metastable, constantly incorporative of new vectors and inhabitations. So Leonov's fantastic creature is not solely the ship. Rather, it is a blend of human metabolisms, film recording technology, and microgravity, all strong and spun into a continuum where individuation is a temporary emergence within the tide of being. Rather than consolidating positions grounded in habitualized terrestrial thinking, these new mobilities of microgravity instead unmake the ground, just as it remakes earthlings. 2. Microbial microgravity. Back in 1965, still caught in this creaturely continuum while spun between solar and electric light, a microgravitationally held Leonov quote, began to turn about in a strange way, first head over heels and then from left to right. The line entangled me like an octopus until I was tied up, but then the line slipped off me in coils and hung freely between me and the ship. These temporary envelopments and tentacular holds prompt the question, how is the ship in turn held in a creaturely embrace? How do such holdings form another continuum which expands the parameters of the planet? 
In 2019, the microbiome of the International Space Station was sequenced, unearthing clusters of microorganisms. Tests indicated that these bacterial and fungal interlopers were mostly freighted on the bodies of astronautic crew and as stowaways aboard the station's frequent cargo deliveries. Such unintended mobilities demonstrate that microbes can not only survive the extremes of microgravity and solar radiation, but actually also flourish. So this microbial plenitude adds another layer of creatureliness to microgravity infrastructures, thereby exploding the myth that the space station is the apogee of complete environmental control. These undesigned inhabitations underscore that while humankind can, temporarily at least, escape the forms of gravity they are habituated to, they cannot evade their microbial symbioses. So too with the space station, which cannot elude its organic coatings of microscopic companions. Along with the expanding infrastructures which they adorn, infiltrate and inhabit, microbes thus do not respect the supposed planetary boundaries of the biosphere. In fact, these mobilities further fold apparent distinctions between Earth and the outer space environment into contiguous relations. So instead of representing an escape from Earth's grasp, what is evident here is that Earthlings are also active participants in extending the parameters of the planet. Microbial inhabitations of microgravity underscore one of the ways in which infrastructures not only hold, but are webbed within and held by organic Earthlings. Hence, microgravitational infrastructures are not only another layer of terraforming, but are also folded within a microbial iteration of terraforming. 3. Spider Nautics Okay, for one last time let's return to our microgravitationally disorientated wanderer. Now slowed to a gentle whirl, Leonov watches Moscow spin into view tracing the urban web as it spindles across Russia's Leviathan landmass. Here, he, quote, saw threads of railroads and highways. Like spider webs, they came together at the cities and then ran off again in different directions. And then there was longer than all the rest, roads from Moscow to Siberia and on. But the spiderliness of urban spaces glimpsed from Leonov's loft are not the only form of webbing facilitated by the creaturely space station. In 2011, astronauts on the International Space Station monitored a steel chamber inhabited by two golden orb spiders. Within, shaky at first, then stealthily, these spider knots wove microgravity webs to capture flightless, but instead gliding and scuttling, fruit fly prey. Below, meanwhile, school groups observed analogue spider test subjects, comparing terrestrial webs and behaviours with their cosmic counterparts. This cosmic ethology revealed that spiders acclimatised quickly to microgravity. Such swift adaptations could be seen as demonstrative of spiders' metamorphic capabilities, uncanny potentials which were brought out through enforced engagements with microgravity. These entanglements perhaps begin to unmake what we understand a, sp a spider to be, or what it could be. The materialisation of these imminent potentials highlights the provisionality with which matter takes form, and shows how earthling bodies are always contingent on their modes of inhabitation. Spiders in space thus bring together in human realms lacing the alterities of arachnid ethology and microgravity into a knotty terrestrial union. In order to conceptualise these new orders of being, and their implications for what it is to be an earthling, what is needed is a philosophy of gravity. That is, an understanding of how the entanglements of various gravities introduce new forms of alterity, new relationalities and new creaturings into the planet. Conclusion Leonov's beholding of various fantastic, cephalopodic and spiderly creatures thus materialises how different orders and scales of bodies become folded into a continuum. As such, the space station is shown to be held as much as it holds. 
This then is the meaning of inhabitation within Cosmoplanetarity's philosophy of gravity and its expanding Earth, to mutually hold and be held in a creaturely embrace. Moreover, the creaturely continuums of the space station, with its materialization of the provisionality of bodies and their propensity for mutation, can provide a prototype for modelling interventions into Earth's decaying systems. Learning how to inhabit a cyborgian creature planet as the work of cosmoplanetarity thus involves collaborating with the uncontrollable agencies and mutations of multi-species Earthlings. Rather than reinforcing the illusory ideals and fantasies of complete control over closed homeostatic systems, any designed interventions into Earth's systems must be done with an awareness of the planet's multi-scalar agencies. It must incorporate the creaturely, the unnameable, and the unpredictable into its calculations. In other words, interventions into Earth systems must be done with an awareness of the planet as a species, as a creature. Rather than further entrenching knowns, then, terraforming should instead be understood as the catalysation of further creaturings. So if the Anthropocene demands that we learn to live on a damaged planet, then cosmoplanetarity instead considers how to live on, through, and as an intentionally designed, expanding, and cyborgian one.